This episode of The Spinner Rack is dedicated to the memory of Leonard Robinson, the Batman of Philadelphia, as well as actress Yvonne Craig, who played Batgirl in the 1966 Batman TV show. This episode is also dedicated to those who were gracious enough to leave us proper feedback on our Facebook page about the direction of the show and their thoughts of improvements, uh, specifically to Kathy Day and Colleen Knable. Thank you guys for your continued support. This episode's for you. And welcome back to the Spinner Rack. Episode 61. I'm just assuming that's the sound that a Spinner Rack would make if you spun it, it would really, be more really like, fast. You know, some kind of like squeaky, squeaky ass yeah. noise, yeah. <laughs> but uh, episode 61 of the Rack. It's amazing. 61 episodes. It's a good, good roll. I'm your host, Baby Brian Adams. Joining me, my co-host... Sorry, I had I was drinking the uh, tea. Uh, Junior Ruiz. Junior Ruiz. Son, we're going to get right into it. First of all, Wizard World was this weekend. Um, we didn't go because the powers just... that be at Wizard World deemed that no, and we couldn't get any interviews, so we just chose to skip it. Um, Which really annoys me because there's certain people who did get to go, um, and it's it, I'm not going to say their name. I know what you're talking about. But it bothers me, like, dude, really? Why are they there? Like, yeah. They're, like, whatever. I, you know what? I can't hate, you know, because that, that sound, makes us sound petty. Right. Like, I'm angry. He went and I didn't. Like, no, it's fine. It's cool. You know what? Let him go. Let him do his thing. You know, like we had discussed in private, um, this was a year of rebuild. So we just need to focus. And then next year, we show why we need to be there. Right. This need, this this year, we lock it up and we solidly perform all year. And you know and what? I feel year, we if we out. don't get it next year, I'll probably buy a, excuse me, a weekend badge and I'll still go take a camera crew and go in there. Yeah. You'd be like, look, you didn't give me a badge. I still try to get stuff done. Yeah, it's not like they could stop you from doing that. Correct. Well, so, they uh, can, but... You know, I actually didn't have a whole lot coming out of Wizard World. Uh, a lot of people were there. Um, the only reason I even brought it up was Stephen Mel had a panel there. Yes, he did. And he talked about Constantine. Yes, he did. And how it was a pleasure to work with Matt Ryan. And I guess he had just filmed those episodes with uh, Matt Ryan last week. So it's fresh in his mind. He yeah. talked about how he was still really, coming off the uh, the excitement. High. Really, uh, really excited to have him part of the Arrowverse. Um, he's talked about you know how he's talked to the DC heads about having Batman in the Arrowverse, and apparently they have not shot down that idea. Hmm. Um, they feel like you know Gotham is its own thing, the cinematic U is its own thing, so they are not writing out the possibility that Batman could show up on Arrow or Flash. Or See, whatever. This goes back to that argument of why don't they just make it all one continuity the way Marvel does Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. with their movies? Because when you do it, whereas Gotham is its own thing, Arrow's its own thing, the movies are their own thing, it gets too confusing. It's just like their comics. Way yeah. to go, DC. Oh, hey, it's it's a multiverse. Yeah. Your continuity doesn't matter. Whatever. I'm actually quite enjoying that, but uh, I, I, let me finish with this, this uh, Stephen yeah, Mel thing. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, you know, he talked about how uh, he's really excited for the future of the DC Arrow. Universe on CW. The, I hate to call it the Arrowverse, but I mean, it pretty much what it is. You know, with Legends of Tomorrow starting this fall, I believe it's this fall, um, Vixen... No, uh, isn't Legends of Tomorrow supposed to be starting in, in the break season? You know, like Arrow and Flash have... They go a certain way and then they take like a mid-season break. Oh, so it'll be like in December then. So, it, yeah, it's supposed to be like during... It's supposed to come out during their mid-season break so that way there's still something going on. Okay, well, that, that's excellent. And then we've got uh, Vixen premiering on the CW Seed. Oh, so they are going with that? Yeah. Wait, the well, CW what? Seed. What the hell it's is a, that? It's an app Okay. for CW streaming content. Okay. Um, Vixen's not going to be on TV traditional sense. Okay. Uh, and it, as, it is animated. Okay. Um, which yeah. is they felt was a better route to go because of her power set. Right. And how they would really need, like, a, a big-time budget yeah, I to bring that. that to the TV well, screen. Isn't that, like, the, the clip that they released a while back where it was Arrow and Flash with Vixen, like, in an anime? What, yep. I mean, maybe that was, like, a teaser to see how the fans would react to it? Uh, I think that was just promo. I think they were planning on going ahead with it as the... Oh, okay. So it's, it's totally animated. Um, it will be part of the Arrowverse... Um, Stephen Amell and Grant Gustin have already, you know, done their characters' lines for the show. So uh -huh. it's going to be an interesting time. 
Um, the, the funny thing that kind of has I me. I tried to start watching you. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to Vixen in a minute. Mm-hmm. And finish with Stephen Amell. You know, he talked about uh, Teenage Mutant Turtles. Apparently, he signed on for multiple ones. I just don't like that he big didn't, Casey Jones. He didn't mask, say how man. many. I, you know, I haven't seen the Casey Jones mask. Really? But at, at this point, like, uh, I'm so not a fan of that version of the turtles as it is. That whatever they do, it's I don't. I'm not gonna care. Are you gonna watch this movie? I'll see it when it comes out on DVD. I'm well, not gonna watch it in the theater. Well, Miller. oh yeah, yeah. You know, if in complete I'm honesty, I'm sure you're gonna wait for my uh, my thoughts on it because you know we'll be. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's that's how I, if if it's something I'm unsure of, I kind of wait and play out to see what people on the scene say about it. I saw what you said about it. I read some reviews about turtles, and then you know I waited till it came out on DVD, and I you know. You bought it or you red boxed it? Oh, I just it? I just red boxed it. Okay. You know, I'm not going to... I'm glad it, I only wasted a dollar. <laughs> um, so it's one of those things where I'm not really impressed with the original, but the fact that it includes Seamus and Stephen Amell, like, that locks me back in. I'm like, yeah, I, I got to see that. You know, I'm a big fan. You know, it's it's the wrestling thing, and, and I love Arrow. So I'll check it out. Um, Vixen, like I said, going to be premiering on the CW Seed soon. Uh, it's an app. If you don't know what it is, I'm going to say it again. It is an app. You will have to download it on your tablet. I don't know if it'll be available on other media devices, smart TVs, and so on. But I would assume, I mean, it would only make sense to be. But the reason I'm going back to Vixen is with the footage now released and the fans getting their first takes of the show, there has become a backlash from certain fans. And that backlash is is that Vixen is not black enough. Seriously? I'm not even kidding. Dude. I'm not even kidding. Like, not black enough in like the sense not that, black like, enough. skin tone? Yes. Like, I don't, like... I'm totally going to leave that five seconds of silence in there just because to let people know that you were completely dumbfounded by the concept that someone would be like, she's not black enough. That's ridiculous. Like, I want to go off on, like, this big uh very explicit tangent right now about this but i'll be the calm professional person and just say once again fanboys are too fickle um they the these kinds of fanboys are what is destroying the industry and makes outside people look at fanboys like us with disgust it's the dude it's this new generation of i'm gonna straight out call them out Tumblr fanboys, dude. That's what I have labeled them now. It's these people Tumblr that, fanboys? Tumblr fanboys. Okay. And girls. They're people that don't even read comics. They see, you know, an, an image of you know, a console panel. I remember panel. we talked about this, and I saw your post on Facebook yeah. and one of the groups. On Tumblr, and they're like, oh, this is... And, you know, they know nothing about it. They don't buy comic books. They don't go in the store. They really don't support the industry outside of probably buying a t-shirt at Hot Topic. Which doesn't really count at Which all. doesn't count at all. Or buying a pop, which doesn't, in my opinion, doesn't count. You're not really supporting the comic book industry. Correct. You know, um, and, and these are the people that want to complain about stuff. And how much of an ignorant thing can you do? I mean, I could understand if someone came at it and said, oh, well, it's going to be like, they're not even putting it on TV. It's not good enough for TV. Man, that would have been a valid complaint. But she's not black enough. Right. Man, come on. Come on. Do you think that has anything to do with all the racial issues that are going on in the world in general nowadays? Uh, or right now? It's a possibility, man. You know, that they're, that they're fan, quote-unquote fans are scrutinizing any and everything that has to do with race? No, it's it's a distinct possibility. Um, it's, you know, it's it's like when we brought up the, the, the women in comic things last month, or last issue, episode, whatever. Last time. It was really just, I wasn't intending on that to be a conversation about women in comics um in my personal opinion i love women it's great i'm all for diversity i want to see women's need, take on we characters need to have, you know yeah uh, we need to have someone on the show and we need to revisit that again we need yeah. to have we need to have a female creator now i told you at the beginning of the sh- or not even at the beginning of the show but when i first got here i read you the critique from someone absolutely um what she brought up a good point because I mean, between you and I, I was in another mind state when we when we did that episode. Um, what did you exactly mean? Because she brought up a good question that had me wondering. When you meant women in comics, how did you mean that? Well, see, it's it wasn't what I meant. It was what was presented to me 
by, I believe it was ABC News, uh, might have been NBC News. It was one of the major news networks, not like a CNN, but it was, I don't think it was ABC, Fox, NBC, it was ABC, NBC, CBS, or CBS. Fox. But it was the way they presented it, like, oh, there's women in comics, like this was something new. Right, well, you how know? did they mean it? Like, women in comics are superheroes, um, women in comics no, are creators? Well, I, I, it, both. Okay. And they even, like, touched upon, like, the cosplay. They, like, almost treated it as if it was something that didn't exist. Uh-huh. Which I feel like that's, like, gives... You're, you're making it look... You're making us look bad. Uh-huh. Like, if you're going to represent us to the world, like, at least, you know, look through it with, like, a, a less negative connotations. At least that's how I felt about it. Because mm-hmm. it made it look like, oh, 47% of, you know, the comic book buying audience is female and they're you know poorly underrepresented now i mean there's some truth into that but to act like that there are no female creators that there are no females in comic books that wonder woman hasn't had a comic book almost an inconsistent basis for 20 years that batgirl hasn't had a comic book you know pretty consistent like to act like that women don't get comic exposure characters yeah it kind of cut you know uh, rubbed me the wrong way there's definitely in the past been a lack of uh, a female creative voice behind the books. But I feel like that's changing now. And I mean, who wouldn't be for that? It was just the way that it was presented by this particular media outlet that I felt like it should have been a little more put into it. You know, I we'll mean, they, to, we're going to have to revisit this. I believe we need to get a couple of guests on the show, all women. Yeah, absolutely. And we should revisit this in a future episode sometime soon though. Absolutely. I have a couple of ideas, but we'll get to that off. But, uh, you know, that's just, just to yeah. lay that little, so going back, cause a little we, we piece got to off. rest. Right, we got off. But, so uh, yeah, so the we Vixen. Um, not black enough. That not is... black It's just ridiculous. I totally think it looks great. I'm excited about it. I and understand. And they mean that by, like, skin tone? Uh, absolutely by skin tone. Like, she is not dark enough. I think have, that is the... Oh have, you, have you seen God. the clip? I, like, like, I have a memory of it in my head, so I'm kind of... Yeah, on it. Okay, here, I'm going to pull up the picture because I've got it all right here. I mean, see, this is kind of a, a bad shot because it's almost like she's looking. Now, she looks almost Latino in there, but if you can tell by the picture, yeah. she's clearly being looked at by a camera, which yeah. will lighten up your skin tone. But, I mean, it's not like she's not she's not black. Right, right, right. I mean, you know, who's, who, who's to say that Vixen, this particular now, portrayal me... of the character, doesn't have an interracial family now let me ask no, to these to these tumblr fan boys and girls as you stated would they walk up to an african-american that they saw on the street who was not quote unquote in their opinion black enough and had a lighter skin tone and tell them you don't look black enough i seriously f-ing doubt it i would not put it past the ignorance of some people that that happens i personally know from my experience in high school that there was this kid that i i remember some of the kids the, the black kids calling Carmel Peace. Okay. Because he wasn't as dark as then. Because one of his parents was white. That is the dumbest, it's, most ignorant fucking thing I've heard all damn week. It's it's beyond ignorant, you know. It's, um, it's you know, we have this whole issue with racism in the country. And I, I know I'm trying to get off subject, so I'm going to do this really quick. But how much of that perpe- racism is perpetuated by... The black movie. people themselves, the black community itself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's And I don't want to turn this into a thing. I'm not a racist. I have black cousins. I have, uh, you know, that, my family covers pretty much any race that's out there. Gotcha. So, you know, a lot anyway. I mean, I don't think there's any Pakistanis in my family, but hey, who knows? Yeah. I got family overseas I don't even know, so you never know. Right, right, right. Um, it's just an ignorant thing to say, and it bothered me because, I mean, I think it looks fantastic. I understand going the animation route. You know, you're going to be able to do anything that you need to do. The budget's not going to be a concern. Right. You know, where it's like, I feel like as a fan of the Flash TV show, when we knew that Grodd was coming in, there was a concern. Oh, man, is he going to look hokey? Is it going to look... It's going to be a guy in a suit. Yeah, is it going to look like, <laughs> you know, Hercules, Xena from the 90s kind yeah. of animation where it just looks really crappy? Um, you know, so there's concerns there, but, I mean, not black enough. It's, it's just ridiculous. No, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, agree. it's... Uh, we're, 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 I've seen the post many times on Facebook. I think you've even posted it yourself. 2015, the year where... America. America was offended by everything. Everything. Yep. Just everything. Um, it's it's just ridiculous. Um, moving on to more WB, The Flash. Um, second season, we're going to be getting three new speedsters. 
Three. Three. Um, Jay Garrick, which is one we know right. about. Who else? Kid Flash. No shit. Yes, and Professor Zoom. Well, Professor Zoom, I kind of expected. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, he was like announced at the end of the season. Yeah. So it's not like you weren't expecting him to show up. But, um, you know, I guess apparently people are concerned. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, that there's going to be an over abundance of speedsters, but they they say it's not. Isn't Professor about. Zoom uh, Reverse Flash? Isn't that the same guy? No. I always thought it was. See, I, I, well, I'm Zoom, not... I think just. I, I, it's. I think it's just going to be Zoom. I don't know if they call him Professors or what did I call him? Did I call him Professor Zoom? Yeah, I, I might have. That might have been my mistake. Okay, I well, believe Zoom. it, but it's just Zoom. They're not the same guy. Okay, I don't know. I always thought um, traditionally. In comic I, don't, books, I don't know my Flash uh, stuff so much. In the comic books, I'm they, a Marvel guy. They've traditionally been kind of really close. Like the Reverse Maybe Flash. Like a relative. The Reverse Flash was from the future. No, Professor or uh, Zoom, not Professor Zoom, but Zoom. Because the reverse flash was also called Professor Zoom. It was all Eobard Thon. See, that's what I. That's what. Okay, I was but okay. Zoom, who was a started out as a Wally West villain, was actually a police officer. Okay. And then his whole thing was that he was doing things to the Flash to make Flash a better hero. Okay. So I think where the confusion is set in is the version of the the reverse Flash that we got on the Flash TV show was kind of like a combination of the two. Okay. You know, he was Eobard Thon from the future, who was there to take down the Flash, but at the same time, he was trying to make him better. Right. So I think people kind of got, like, confused. But people are concerned. I mean, and from what I'm reading, uh, Jay Garrick is going to be like he traditionally was in the DC Universe. He's going to be more of, like, a mentor to Barry. Okay, that's cool. So I I don't recall if the guy is older than Grant Gustin. See, I I didn't see a good chunk of the first season of Flash. I Mm -hmm. saw, like, the first five or six episodes, and then I saw the season finale. So I'm on the fence of whether I just want to jump into season two. Or if I want to go back and watch season one before season two. Because, look, man, I don't watch any of these shows on TV. I don't have time. But I want to be able to, to, to sit back and watch them. Honestly, I would sit Plus, back I and hate watch commercials. Flash. I would sit back and watch The Flash. I wouldn't be able to watch it live, that's for sure. Yeah. Everything, I'd have to DVR it and then catch it when I Yeah, can. I don't... I'm not a commercial person either. I always... I mean, even if I'm not, like... It's Dude, very, I still haven't finished Daredevil. Really? I've got like five. Four I finally or five finished episodes. it. I was holding out to try and watch it with Melissa. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, you know, as guys that are into comic books, that women aren't as into it as you know, some of them aren't as blessed as like John Essig, mm-hmm. whose wife is obviously totally into it as much as he is. So you've got to pick and choose, and then when you get them and they're actually interested in watching something, you want to like stick with them. Yeah. So I stuck with her as long as I could, but we watched so much other stuff that it kind of got put to the side, and then it was getting spoiled for me, so I had to watch it all. Right. But uh, I would recommend going back and watching it. Uh, I just breezed through the article again. It is Professor Zoom. Okay. But he is not... uh, They're not really saying if he is going to be like a different version of Eobard Thawne that we just haven't seen, or if it's going to be a completely different person. Because now that they have opened up the multiverse, you know, any possibility is on the table. So um, that's going to be exciting. Both those shows are premiering 45 days, I think. Yeah, October. 40-something days, October. Uh, speaking of television premieres, uh, last Sunday, Walking Dead, since it's actually we record on Sunday, we haven't seen it yet, but that started. Fear the Walking Dead. Yep. First episode. I'm excited to see that. Um, you know, the, I think the first episode is really going to give us everything we need to know about that is whether or not it's going to be good or it's not going to be good or, you know. Um, there's a rumor that George Miller, the director of um, Mad Max Fury Road, will be helming the sequel to Man of Steel. Really? So that puts to bet that puts to rest any speculation that people had that Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice was the Man of Steel sequel. No, apparently there will be a Man of Steel sequel. Uh, Warner Brothers has not acknowledged this to be true. Um, the information actually comes from the director of the uh, Death of Superman Lives. Ah, um, which I heard was actually really good. I'm actually really interested in seeing that. But uh, John Sh- Schnepp, I think his name was, he said that uh, he said in an interview that he knew that George Miller would be directing the new Man of Steel. So I don't know if that's just speculation or if he actually knows or you know it's just talking out his ass. Right. But uh, there will be a Man of Steel sequel, which is good. Principal photography has finished on uh, Civil War. Yes. <sighs> We're getting that we're much closer. Get, we, see, the trailer that leaked during D23 weekend, supposedly mm-hmm. people are saying it's fake. 
Oh, really? Yeah. What, that it was, like, just, like, hodgepodge stuff together from other... That it was just a fake trailer that was posted. But, I don't know, there was... Uh... Like, fake trailer, and as it was taken from pre-existing footage and just cut together to make it appear to be a Civil War trailer? They, they or... didn't specify. No. But I watched it. I even shared it. It looked legit. So, I don't know what they're talking about. You know, I, I, I don't know. Have you watched it? No. You know, you know me. If if they put out they these, show like, some, uh, they show Black Panther. Yeah, that's it's. I've seen a lot of the things on the internet of these first looks at Black Panther, and but like in motion, like it was such a. Well, you they know even me, show man. Iron Spider. You know me with such. I saw that too. I did actually see cl- just. Uh, I posted images the, the stills. Yeah, I am the type of person that I don't watch any of that stuff until I get like an HD quality version, like the Suicide Squad trailer. Yeah, I watched it before me and you in the book talked about it, but. I really didn't care enough to watch it again until they actually put out an HD version, and then I still don't think I cared enough to watch that. When do you um, when do you suspect we'll get a trailer? Rumor has it that uh, we'll, we'll get a teaser or some kind of trailer with uh, Force. I, that's what I was just going to say. Star, Star Wars, Force Awakens. Um, that would make sense because I mean, you know, post production, putting in all the special effects and stuff, that takes a lot of time. Right. So, giving that there's a good, you know, three to four months from now till. That releases, I could totally see that as being viable. Speaking of Star Wars, on a side note, are you going to watch Star Wars? Yes. When are you going? Uh, I don't know. I requested off the because it comes out Friday, December eighteenth. Honestly, because I'm in the weird predicament of not owning a car and not knowing if I will have a car by then. I hope to have a car by then, but uh, honestly, it's one of those things. If someone's going to go, man, I'm game. That's a but movie. I requested like. that Friday off so I can go. Thursday night. Yeah. Because I'm not waiting. I'm not, I'm not going to be on Facebook Thursday night, Friday morning with everybody talking about how awesome Star Wars. I'm going Thursday night. So hopefully they give me that Friday off so I am not dead at work. Got to pre-buy them tickets, man. I ain't worried about that. No? My cousin works at a movie theater. Oh, does he? She. She? Yep. So you'll, you'll be going to the city then? Um, If I can't get the tickets out here, I'll talk to her about it. So yeah, so that's exciting. Um. Some some preacher photos have leaked from the uh, from the show. I totally forgot about that. Show. Showing our face and it's like how does I, it look? I was does, well. Does that's it look the as problem. As the that's the problem. He just looks like a normal dude. Like I was uh, expecting like our face pictures, but it's just the dude. That's sucks. Just, here. There you go. They're right there. That's that's it's totally Which unimpressive. One? Right there. That's our face. Well, he looks like an ass. Yeah, he just looks like. I mean, unless that's something that's like, like pre. Booty looking face, you know. Yeah, no, that's what know. it is. It, that's yeah, that's pre anything, any injury. I'm assuming. Um, you know, at least you would hope because it doesn't. I mean, the, the the thing that sucks about the images that were leaked is they're not really like, oh, this is what you're looking at. It's just hey, here's some images, you know. Right. Figure it here's, out for yourself. here's the actor. For all so, we know, that might just be. Oh snap! You know what? That might be like pre special effects. I just found it, and it looks pretty good. The, arse, the actual arse yep, face? Yeah, the actual arse face. There you go. He's right in the middle, as you can obviously tell. You see what I mean? So I'm guessing that was like a picture of the actor before makeup. Yeah, that actually doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look as nearly as horrible as the comic book, but yeah, right, it's pretty right, good. Right. Uh, you know, I'll be interested to see how that show does once it gets on. Only because, like, I'm, I'm kind of worried about it. I love the Preacher storyline. It's one of my favorite story arcs, or, or series, I should say. And knowing that Seth Rogen's executive producing on it, right. man, just gives me worries. Gives me worries, man. Um, Dark Horse. Apparently people like think Dark Horse is dying and that uh, they will be going out of business. Really? And uh, Yeah. And I've, uh, I just read an interview with their, their, their head, Mike Richardson. How does stuff like this get automatically just posted on, on Facebook? I have no idea. I don't follow stuff like this. Yeah, that's that's strange. You should follow stuff like this, though. Yeah. Um, Mike Richardson, pretty much like, uh, he says that he doesn't understand why people are speculating that Dark Horse is going to die. That um, makes no sense. Dark Horse is actually doing, according to him, financially better than they have ever been. Dark Horse is great. Dark Horse is, for lack of a better term, the... I believe Dark Horse was the original image before Image became Yeah, totally. Image. Does that make sense? It absolutely makes sense. Because Dark Horse is where they did have some licenses, but they were more like creator-owned, mm-hmm. independent stuff. 
and then Image came along and just blew all that yeah. away. And people seem to forget about Dark Horse unless it was Star Wars. Uh, yeah, see, or that's, Hellboy. That's the thing is, I think some people identify Dark Horse so much with Star Wars that when Star Wars the brand went back, when Disney bought it, and then they went to Marvel, and Dark Horse lost the brand, that they immediately thought Dark Horse was done. Right. And that's by no means. No. Um, Dark Horse, This is, I believe them losing Star Wars is actually a better opportunity for them because mm-hmm. that's less focus and money that they have to put into advertising that stuff. And they can use that to be uh, a version of Image Comics. Because Image Comics even now seems like it's getting over flooded with creator own stuff. Yeah. You know, so why not take some of that and and put it out with your brand mm-hmm. and be a com- and be an alternative to image. Yeah, well, I mean, they've been very successful. You know, Fight Club Two has done really well for them. Um, they've also got, uh, you know, they've got a, a superhero line that's they're See, working but Fight, on. Fight Club is more of a licensee kind of thing. Yeah, totally, totally. Uh, their superhero line they said is not made to create, not made to compete with Marvel, DC, DC and... or even gotcha. Image as superheroes. Um, image has superheroes besides Invincible. Some, not much. Yeah, they they are so heavily creator owned right now, and just completely like there's you can't call the Image Universe that they're really more of like a production company at this point. Yeah, you know, um, you know they had that they did that Legend of Zelda art book. I think it was the History of Hyrule or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 the hardcover. And that thing sold really well for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still curious on the news we reported way back in the beginning of the spinner rack we talked about. The Mario Brothers, oh, yeah, the, the, the Nintendo, Nintendo comics. So yeah. Tell, when is that going to I was thinking happen? about that. Um, unfortunately, he didn't say anything about that. He did lament passing on My Little Pony, though. You um, think they're he, kicking themselves for that? Yeah, he said so. Oh, yeah? He said that he had no idea that My Little Pony was as big as it was. He had never heard of bronies and that he just doesn't understand the appeal. Yeah, I think it's a better fit at IDW, though, uh, I'm, I'm sure. I, I really do, because it fits with what IDW does is in terms of their, um, not pop culture, but their younger reader slash nostalgia mm-hmm. fans. I, I think it, it's a better fit, because they got a lot of stuff there already as it is. G.I. Joe, yeah. you've got Ninja Turtles, you've got, well... Um, not My Little Pony. You've got the Nickelodeon stuff that they publish. I mean, I I, guess, I think they made a better choice by pass. I mean, obviously not financially. Dark Horse didn't make a better choice, but I think uh, just the brand itself landing at IDW is better. Yeah, totally. Makes I mean, because he straight out said like he doesn't understand it. But then there you go. Like he because... doesn't understand the appeal and good for IDW. Yeah, know? exactly. Because you don't understand it, IDW does. Yeah, IDW totally. made it successful and it mm-hmm. worked for them. If you put it with Dark Horse, who they just said does not understand like, it, he, it's ruined from the get-go. He made some really good comparisons that any I think anybody from any generation would understand. And he was like, you know, when I was a kid, the Max Fletcher cartoons, the Superman cartoons, really yeah. big. And then they went away, and then the next, you know, Superman cartoons. And he said he watched them, but he hated them. He always was like, oh, I wish, you know. So it's kind of like that view. Yeah. Like he said, you know, when he was a kid, like the Flash, he was really into the Flash Gordon serials. And then there was a different Flash Gordon. So it's like, you know, any generation, you know, you grow up with one thing. And then it gets replaced by somebody else's. You're going to kind of like, uh... Yeah, it's not the know. same. It's just not the same. Except way. for Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Because the Nickelodeon show right now is just hitting it's on all cylinders. popping, dude. That's a great show. Such a great show. What... Now, in this age of the comic book, especially, specifically, the big two, I actually feel like more Marvel than DC. They constantly have to do these months where they do these variant covers. They're both doing them. Uh, yeah, I know DC, they're both doing DC them, is, but... Marvel is starting to do it now every single month. Um, they started in the last year or so, but DC has been, they, they started that in my opinion. And, uh, they're, well, Marvel has officially now jumped the shark for me doing the dumbest variant cover idea, in my opinion, cosplay covers. Seriously? Like with actual cosplayers? Cosplay covers. You know, that's actually pretty cool. I just like. (sighs) That's actually pretty cool because what it does now is bring more focus. Oh, hell. That's, uh, what's her name? Uh, blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, God, why can't I remember her name right now? Uh, if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about, she... Oh, the names are right here. Uh, Yaha Han. Why couldn't I remember that? Let me see what other <laughs> names are on here. Um, Yaha Han? Mm-hmm. Are you sure that's her name? Yeah. Yaha is her first name. Han is her last okay. name. Okay. Um, you know what? These covers are actually really cool because what this does is put focus on the cosplay community, which I think should be focused on. And it also gives these cosplayers more... Because uh, they don't get anything out of it. 
most of them don't. They they get the enjoyment of doing it. But for an outlet like, an outlet like this to come along and be like, you know what, this is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, not yaha. Yeah, Whatever. I thought you were something was weird with that. Whatever. I don't care. You know what? I'm you talking know, about. my whole problem with the cosplay is, is is it's it's I feel like it's spun to this part to where it's becoming like uh, people are looking at it as like a career, and I don't know why that just these a bad taste. I don't think I don't cosplay like can be a career. I think it can be a launching point for but, I mean, when you hear a these, modeling career. When you hear these stories about people are going to conventions and they're trying to get pictures with cosplayers and the cosplayers like, oh, well, that'll be 10 bucks. You know, that just kind of, it's like, something about that just rubs me wrong, man. Like, if you're if you're not, I can understand maybe if you had a, a table and you did that or if you're part of a booth, but to just, like, go to the con and then be requesting that people give you money. Right. I can see you maybe asking for, like, a tip or something. You know, give me to, you know something uh, that's uh, voluntary. I yeah. Get, but I don't know, man. I'm just. I think those are pretty cool. Now, how soon do you think it is before DC jumps on that? Uh, I, I who knows. I would like to say that they won't because it's copying Marvel and no one likes to do that. But that's all they do, man. Yeah, they copy. That's all they you know, do. No, no, I, I think those are pretty cool. Um, she was the only name that I recognized on that list. Um, I'm sure if. There were other cosplayers that I more like. Let's say Ivy Doom Kitty, for example. Let's say she would have cosplayed one of them. Uh-huh. Do you know what that would do to have fans line up and now they have an actual comic of her to sign? That's pretty cool. That yeah. especially if it's a, a, a nothing against Ivy or any of these other cosplayers, but if you're a cosplayer who has just decided this is your first time doing it and you make this really cool costume and Marvel approaches, dude, this costume is awesome. We want you undercover. Can you imagine what that would do for your psyche and your personality? Oh yeah, that That'd would be, be awesome. Great. That would be. That, that would be great. And you know what? Kudos to Marvel actually for doing that. Because now it seems like they're, like I said, they're focusing more on the fans aspect of it. Because it's not just a co- cause well, cosplayers start off as fans. I feel like it's kind of giving a fan a thank you. I feel like that's all that Marvel does anymore. Just cater to fans. Cater to the new fans. To the new While fans, us, yeah. People who actually spend money on their product are left in the background. No, I, I totally see that. Maybe we should go cosplay. Yeah, I guess. We, I don't uh, know what I'm going to cosplay dude, as. Jake and the Fat Man. Jake and the Fat Man? Do nice. you remember that show? I do. Throwback. I do. Let's do Jake and the Fat Man. Me and a buddy of mine were going to cosplay as Jake and uh, Elwood Blues, except we'd have been a really extreme on both ends. Right. He's really tall and thin, and I'm really fat. <laughs> <laughs> no. We would have been like the ultimate version of the all the Blues Brothers. Uh, you know, you actually made that sound a lot more. You've lightened my attitude towards this just now in those few in those few minutes there. Explain. It's, Don't it's, look you know, at it as what Marvel is doing for themselves. Look at it as like, for what it's doing for the cosplay community. Dude, do you know there's a magazine called uh, God? Uh, it's cosplay something. But the entire magazine, and it's sold like at Walmart. And t- I found my copy at Meyer. Really? Um, it is a magazine centered around cosplayers and their cosplays, all at, at different kinds of conventions. Um, the thing that caught my attention was the cover. It was like I was just walking. I happened to walk past the magazines at Meyer. You know, no, they don't publish magazines anymore that I I'm into. Right. Uh, those days are long gone. Yeah. No. No. Totally. Um, but for some reason, I was perusing this aisle, and I happened to see the classic pose. Of Harley Quinn, I she's leaning back into the Joker with uh, wearing the tux that mm-hmm. Alex Ross drew as a cosplay on the cover, and it was the classic Harley, but the Joker was a little bit on the edge, almost like a mix of the Jared Leto version. Right. But I was like, you know what? This is pretty cool. It's a cosplay magazine, so I start flipping through it, and one of my 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 absolute favorite cosplayer of all had a piece dead in the center of the magazine. So I says, you know what? I'm buying this. My favorite cosplayer ever. She was in there, and I was just like, and I wrote her on Facebook. I says, you're the reason I bought this magazine. I says, I didn't know you had a spread in it. It's like a two or three page spread. You're in it. I bought it. Next time you're in Chicago, I have to have you sign it. She wrote me back. She's like, that is awesome. Thanks. You know, that, that that's great. And definitely. Oh, for those wondering, it's Nadia, uh, Nadia Sonica. So. Right on. So in, in closing here, I have one more thing I want to say about cosplay. Um, I have been, you know, because it's convention season, you've been inundated, especially fans of comic books. With pictures of cosplayers from friends. That's and a new word I've never heard before. Inundated? Yes. Really? Really. Wow. Never heard that. You learn something new every day, man. Dun, dun, dun. So, you know, you've been just, it, it's just everywhere, man. Pictures of cosplayers that people are taking. I have started to become annoyed by overly sexual cosplay. Yeah, because um, it crosses that line where it's like you're not cosplaying anymore. Yeah. You're it's just more... like you're just trying to show off your ass. Yeah. 
Like, I saw this picture of a girl cosplaying as Venom. And I know exactly which one you're talking about. And it's like... Where she had, like, the, the symbiote, uh, I don't know, tentacles wrapped around her cheeks. Yeah. And it was like, she was looking over her shoulder at you. Yes, that's exactly. I saw that. It's like, dude, come on. Like, that's... That's not cos- cosplay. You're just trying to show off your ass, man. Yeah. No, there. you know what? There are a lot of cosplayers out there who do that. And then it, 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 it's it's on the border. You know, this is... I, I think we need to have a cosplayer on the show as well. Um, I interviewed Ivy Doom Someone Kate. that's not Carrie. <laughs> no offense to Carrie if you listen well, to Carrie's this. Well, Carrie's not a woman. Well, that, that, that's true. Um, so. I interviewed Ivy Doom Kitty back at C2E2, and I believe that's one of the questions I asked her. I, I, I don't recall 100%. But I would like to have, if, if you're out there listening and you're a cosplay, oh, a female cosplayer and you like to be on the show. And you're in the just, Chicago area, obviously. No, not even, because we could just have them phone in. Oh, true that, true that. What not? Duh, miracles of technology. Um, but no, that's something I think we should visit. But I, I totally agree. Um, there are a lot of cosplayers out there, more notable than others, who tend to have their costumes be a lot more skimpier. Mm-hmm. But then they go and they say, well, I'm not a cosplayer, I'm a model. And it's just like, I, I see exactly what you're... I'm not a fan of it either. As a man, yes, I am a fan of it. But in hindsight, as, um, as, as, a, as a fan, looking at it, especially like if you're going to a convention and you're wearing this at a convention with your ass cheeks hanging right. out and there's kids around. Yeah, kids are going to be like, hey, I want to take a picture with, you know... The venom with the butt floss. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> I don't, it's just come like, on. come on. You know, I mean, I get it's, it and I don't get it. As much as women are trying to like... It, it, you know, and this has been going on since the '60s. Equality and wanting to be treated as equal is this not a kind of a step back? Just to like, I'm just going to dress like a slutty venom. It's like, come on, man. Right. It, you're supposed to be wanting to empower, not just look like a, a whore. No, I agree. So, you know, that's 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 the closing on the cosplay thing. Uh, that's pretty much all I had this week. Um, you know, I was going to talk about Walt, Walt Simonson doing Thor, but for some reason, now that we've been through this episode and I had it on my list to talk about. I think we already talked about it at some point that I said that he was doing a new Thor book, but it wasn't Marvel's Thor. Really? Yeah. I feel like I talked about this and I was, you know, when I was sifting through the news during the week, I was like, holy shit, how did I, how did I pass this up? Right. You know, how did I miss Walt Simonson, like the guy who wrote the Thor run of Thor runs writing Thor? Now, I love this writing. Art, on the other hand, really didn't do too much for me. But I love the writing. Well, he's he's doing both both books. Ah. He's doing both the writing and the art. It's called the book's called Ragnarok. Okay. Um, sixth issue is about to come out. I have heard of that book. It's a uh, it's IDW. IDW. Yeah. yeah. So I gotta get that man, and you know. Oh, that book is only at issue six. Only at issue. That six. book came out when I was still at the shop. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like the first issue came out like over a year ago. Yeah. So it's like really, it it seems to be like. When I was looking at release, there's almost two to three months, sometimes more, in between issues. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if, like, what the deal is with that, but I'm going to check it out. Cool. I'll probably write a review up for the website that people will see when it gets done. Mm-hmm. i got to get the other web, the other, I'm not writing any reviews, man, until I get all the reviews posted. Because oh, I don't want to, like, out no, I feel you. I, them, I know. You know? Yeah. That and there ain't nothing been review worthy, really. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing, at least, yeah, because everything you can pretty much sum it up in a, in a sentence or so. It's like, you know, it, it's great. Like, I got asked a question on uh, a page of the night, or it was asked by to everybody when I answered it, and the guy was like, I'm reading uh, Justice League and Deathstroke. Or, no, I was reading Son of exactly Robin or something and Deathstroke. I was going to comment. Like, on how did they and tie together? Like, and, yeah, well, I just nailed it perfectly. I think though. I commented. I'm not sure. I don't think you did. I think you just liked my no, comment because I didn't. I mention. commented saying, it might, it might even be the same post. It's the one where uh, I think Book Out asked, you know, what what's your favorite story or something like that. And I was oh, like, oh, yeah, no, it was a different what's post. What's the impact I that. Of, yeah. of history of comics or something? Yeah, he said it was 215. What do we feel if this was going to be an impact on your comics or not? Wash. Yeah. A wash. Yeah, so I was like the last, in my opinion, super impactful thing in comics was the creation of the Ultimate yeah. Universe. I, I am very excited to talk about like uh, as far as like all the diversity. I don't even know if I'm excited. I'm just looking forward to doing the show. It will definitely be one of our not talking about current news weeks, but coming soon we will be doing an episode dedicated to all new all different Marvel now because there is just that much to talk about. Okay. I can get behind that. And I and I feel it, it uh, you know. I mean, it's the, it's the next big thing. We did devote an episode to, you know, 
Well, actually, it was it was divided. We yeah. gave half of it to New Fifty Two and half of it to Marvel Now. Yeah. But there's such a wealth of Which stuff coming out. Which I believe is what our first episode. Yeah, it was wow. our first episode. Sixty episodes ago. Yeah. Um. So I just want to go ahead and announce in coming episodes of the Spinner Rack. Uh, we're gonna have a lot more interviews on uh, a lot more cr- independent creators. Like we had Aaron Moore a couple episodes ago. So shout out to Aaron Moore and RIA Comics. If you haven't checked that out, please do. Uh, you can follow my Facebook. Captain Sabibi. Captain Sabibi. I know you're super hyped for that. I'm super hyped for that. I want to read that. Especially if like knowing that like the artist is going to create me as a character. I'm like, yeah, yeah. that that's cool. And the fact that it's known that I don't want to be just like... Dude, how badass would it be if he just made you wearing a t-shirt and he put our logo on the shirt? <clears throat> that would that would be weird. But That's, an would be awesome. That's an idea. That's an idea. Anyway. Me, I could give me a tattoo or like a mutant brand like over my eye, like a CR. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bishop. Um, yeah, that was a little too Bishop. So yeah, we're going to have uh, some more creators on the show coming soon. Uh, a lot of independent creators. If you are an indie, independent writer or artist... Uh, please contact us. We'd like to have you on the show. You know, hell, it's it's all great to promote your stuff. That's what we're here for. Mm-hmm. Um, when we first started out, we were to still align the voice of the voiceless, so to speak. Um, Want to kind of get back to that. You know, get back to our roots. Um, like we mentioned earlier, do a follow up to the women in comics. Hopefully, we can get some guests to that. It's be, being currently worked on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Alex is uh, settling into his new home. So his uh, his videos should start coming back pretty soon. Uh, I am working on another podcast, uh, which I think I've settled on a title. I'm not 100% sure, so I don't want to say it yet. Um, so that podcast will be all about toys. Um, not in the sense that it will be a traditional podcast like you and I do. Right. It's more so uh, tips. I don't even want to get into it. It's, it's right just, on. you know, I, no. I, I laid it out for Alex. Um, I want to throw a shout out to my boy, uh, Ed High Ponce. Check out The Art of Ed High on Facebook. Also check out Ed's uh, event, Action Figure Appreciation Day. Um, I wish we could have had the time or I would have had the foresight to have thought about having Ed on to talk about his event. Yeah. This is the fourth year. When is um, it? It's a, it's a global thing. It's actually within the next couple of days. Oh, man. Um, sometime this week. Um, it's over the course of, oh, it's over 48 hours. He does it over two days to account for the different time zones and stuff. Yeah. But it's really cool. If you can get into the group, he'll, I'm sure he'll add you in. It's just collectors of toys all across the world sharing their collections, their pieces, doing, you know, mock-up DOs, doing recreations of comic book covers, movie scenes, people doing toy fair. It's really an interesting thing. I've enjoyed it highly. Next year, I plan on trying to get him in. But check out his page, The Art of Being High. Nice. On Facebook. H-I. Yeah, H-I. Maybe I always have him on just to promote it just and to talk promote, about it. Yeah, yeah, totally. The guy's cool dude, man. Cool dude. Definitely old school. Um, that's all I. Oh, one thing I think uh, we we missed out. Didn't you? Didn't you have some Fantastic Four stuff you wanted to talk about? No, I'm actually writing a blog. Okay, okay, okay. I'm writing a blog. Awesome. All right. Well, that's all I got. The un- um, unfortunate news about the Fantastic Four. I'll just throw in as an ending. Apparently, Fox is greenlit a sequel. Yeah, I don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. But you know, when the when the site is up, look for my blog on it. Yeah, I guess when you got the money to blow, whatever, right? Yeah, hey man, I guess. I don't know how that happens when your movie doesn't even make a quarter of its budget back. Whatever. I mean, um, I mean that's all I got. Like I said, uh, thank you to everybody who's been listening, uh, trying to go in a different direction, being more upbeat with our episodes. Yeah. Um, we got to bring somewhere along the line we've lost our energy, and I think we, we found have. It, you um, know. But you know, we bounce off of each other, and it's no secret I have my issues, I have my demons, um, and I let that show which I really shouldn't have. Like you, we, we discussed in private, you know, I should leave that stuff at the door. Um, so I apologize to our listeners um, who have been tuning in lately and have been uh, very unimpressed with uh, our under or my underwhelming performance. Um, so I apologize for that. But I don't know if you can tell in this episode, I'm a lot more focused, uh, I'm a lot more focused on the lockup. And I don't know your friend's name, but the one you finally got to listen, have him listen to this and see what he thinks. Oh, I'll definitely be hitting him up and be like, hey, you got to listen to the lockup. So, like I said, he don't give no about comic books, but um, he'll you listen know, to the wrestling podcast. Just, you know, a big thank you to uh, our supporters who continue to listen, even though you guys don't let us know that you're listening. But we know that you are because you commented on my Facebook. So thank you to you guys. Thanks to all the feedback. You yes, know. it was all greatly appreciated. Um, especially, I liked all of them. 
Um, I thought I liked all of them. I apparently skipped over Melissa's comment, which I did not mean to do. So, Melissa, I am giving you an on-air apology. Um, next time. Well, I, I just got the feels. <laughs> don't go like you're a... <laughs> Next time, please don't go ahead and delete your comment because then I will truly forget that he was even there. Um, but other than that, you know, like I said, uh, yeah, just, you know, continue. Thank you for continuing to stick by us. We really, really appreciate it. You know, um, we do this as a passion. Uh, we enjoy when we get all types of feedback, whether it's negative or positive, you know. So this uh, 2015 is a uh, definitely a work in progress as mm -hmm. far as the brand is concerned. Well, and, anyone that's followed us from the beginning knows how much, if, if you look at, when you started originally, you and David started this to where it's at now. It's it's obviously an evolving process. Yeah, yeah. But this is the year where we feel like we finally got it, and we're putting we're in focused solid on work. what we want it to be and where we want it to go. So come hit the ground running. Uh, we should be all cylinders, uh, and hopefully you guys can actually start to meet Brian at some of these conventions, yeah. the local conventions. That yeah, woohoo! Getting out there. I hope so. We're getting out there. Four years strong, and you can like. You know, uh, you know, cold. man, it's it's been a weird thing, dude. It's I always have some kind of friggin' problem, man. Yeah. Well, it's we're we're rambling. Always an ailment. We're rambling. But anyway, the hospital that one year C two E two. I was so pissed about that, man. So yeah. pissed in the hospital for C two E two. Ah. It's all good. But we're getting there. We're getting there. So uh, you know, that's it for this episode. Uh, any comments? Anything? Feedback? Uh, Junior Comic Remix. Brian Comic Remix. Alex Comic Remix. Um, check Follow out the Facebook us, page yeah, facebook.com slash comics remix at uh, on twitter at comics remix on twitter at the spinner rack um, Instagram Alex Alex is on Instagram uh, shy town cylon uh, shy underscore town underscore cylon uh, so make sure to check that out um, check out our past stuff check us out on YouTube just search comics remix on YouTube Hoping um, to get that website launched soon so we can get this on it's, iTunes. You know what, man? It's almost done. It really We're is. There. We're just waiting on a few more uh, logos to be presented. Uh, uh, and, and we're waiting for a few other uh, things to figure out how to connect certain... You know, we're, none of us are tech savvy. Yeah. So, but we're uh, we're literally just comic book fans doing a show for comic book fans. Yeah. But we're almost. So there. it's a learning process, and obviously there is a learning curve. I before we sign out, I do want to say some people who were gracious enough to combat or com what the f some people <laughs> who were gracious enough to comment back on uh, my Facebook post. Um, we don't do videos anymore because it's very it's a very time consuming thing. Uh, what I love, excuse me, what I love to go back to it, absolutely. Uh, it was abs it was, it was uh, very, very, very fun. Um, but there are a lot of factors that go into that. Uh, one day, maybe, we'll go back to video. But uh, you know, on, a, on a permanent basis as far as our show goes. I mean, we still do video if we're like an interview or Right, no, totally. Stuff. But uh, for the foreseeable future, it's going to be uh, podcast only as far as this show and the lockup is concerned and as far as the upcoming toy show is concerned. Um so, but like once again, thank you to everybody who left the feedback. Um, and there, are, I know there are, are quite a few of you. Actually, I don't know about you, but uh, I get a lot of friend requests. Uh, I, I don't know who these people are. I don't. I'm sure they're probably listeners. I don't know. Yeah. It's, um, but because I, I don't know too. who they are, I don't approve them. Only because this is my personal Facebook. Um, so I am going to probably start a brand new Facebook page where I approve any and everybody. Um, so I'll let you guys know about that too. So. Right on. But for now, just hit us up on the Comic Streamix Facebook page. Yeah, that works. That's uh, episode 61. Hope you enjoyed it. See you back here next week for more comic talk. Peace. On Spin Rack. Peace.